Hi and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll show how to replace the two catalytic converters and the four oxygen sensors on a W210 Mercedes-Benz E320. Uh, there could be many causes uh, for a catalytic converter failure. In this case it was just this rattling noise that wouldn't go away as if there was a rock in the exhaust system uh, even at idle uh, there uh, as a, you know uh, you would have to see what the symptoms are and uh, why is it that um, your catalytic converter is failing uh, so uh, you want to find out the main reason for it and I can talk about it in, in a little while as to some of the other symptoms but uh, in this case it's just this rattling noise uh, from under the car even at idle or when driving so I start off by uh, removing um, the two bolts and nuts uh, connecting the right pipe to the transmission housing and then uh, disconnecting the O2 sensor uh, this is the downstream sensor uh, meaning after the catalytic converter and then um, using a very long ex extension uh, and 13 millimeter socket uh, start off by um, loosening the bolt uh, that's on the inside of the car, um, not the one that's on the outside because that's much harder to get to. And once you remove this bolt, uh, you can uh, uh, you can turn the pipe um, a little. It gives you more room to work on the uh, bolt that's on the outside. And I suggest that you um, spray some penetrating oil uh, like WD-20 or liquid drench the night before if you can uh, on um, on all the uh, connection points these bolts and nuts because uh, uh, they get very hot and so of course uh, much harder to undo So as you can see here, I'm turning it a little bit as much as I can in order to get to the outside bolt. And I'm using a crow uh, socket, uh, 13 millimeter also, um, and, and, and that's the oxygen sensor, the, the, the bank to this bank to the one on the right so that's the ox upstream oxygen sensor the other connection point is on top of the car and the engine bay um, so this is the one that's the hardest to uh, loosen once you loosen it then you can use you can continue using the crow socket or or uh, you can use a swivel head socket also 13 millimeter it just depends on uh, what size bolt was used depending on whether or not it's the original one if it is the original one it should be 13 but it could be some other size uh, bolt and so uh, it's good to have a set of sockets and wrenches and whatnot different tools and uh, so i'm using this swivel head socket now that i have a little room and i've loosened it uh, because you you, you have very little room to turn it, uh, maybe uh, one eighth of a turn each time. So therefore it's better to go with a uh, swivel head socket uh, because you don't have a straight line to the bolt. And so what you want to do is as you're pushing and as you're making sure that the socket doesn't, the socket doesn't leave the bolt, uh, while applying pressure, you keep turning and uh, maintaining the connection between the socket and the head of the bolt. And uh, you just need to be patient 
uh, it's not something that uh, you want to leave some time for this maybe it will take you it took me about um, an hour or so to get the right pipe out uh, but it might take you longer because you're working on the ground if you have a lift of course then this would be a lot easier but uh, lying down on the ground um, I didn't use a creeper and I just lifted the front of the car um, I didn't have the time to lift uh, both the front and the back but um, uh, the more room you have the more room you can give yourself the higher you can lift the car the better because there's very little room and then once uh, it's disconnected from the exhaust manifold you just pull it from um, the back uh, I'm not shown here but but there are two other bolts towards the end you'll see as I uh, as I do the installation um, there's a connection point of course between the front exhaust system and the back the rear of the car and so you'll have to disconnect that last and then you just pull it out as I did then uh, once on the ground you want to make sure you compare the new part or if it's used uh, you just want to compare that you have the right part uh, this uh, converter I purchased from eBay a brand new third party uh, so it's not exactly the same as the one from Mercedes-Benz but um, and I had to make a slight modification and I'll show you that next but I'm removing the oxygen sensor using a special socket as you see there it's called oxygen sensor socket you can get that from if you're in the US from um, uh, Harbor Freight um, all of the tools I'm mentioning uh, in this video you can get from Harbor so once you remove uh, both of the uh, oxygen sensors uh, just put the new ones I mean the, the old sensor into the new uh, the new pipe so that uh, you don't damage the sensor until you're ready to apply anti-seize some copper grease to the threats of the oxygen sensor and I'll show you that later uh, this collar uh, also you'll remove so you place them next to each other and you see what's the new one missing and then you take it from the old and put it in the new this collar just happens to be in good shape but still and I'm putting it in the new pipe Uh, I'm moving on to the uh, left or the, the driver sides converter again starting with the bolt that is on the inside as opposed to the one that is uh, on the outside and by outside I mean the one closest to the door as opposed to the inside one which is closest to the engine or to the um, transmission so it's really uh, as long as you apply some penetrating oil uh, it's easier to remove the inside bolts than the outside ones as you can see here
and then you disconnect the two these are all 13 millimeters so 13 or 12 either the bolt is 13 and the nut is 12 or uh, or in reverse but uh, regardless you remove these in order to be able to turn the pipe a little bit in order to be able to have more room to get to the inside bolt Now, uh, so you kind of repeat the same procedure as the other side, but um, just to tell you about some of the other symptoms, as I promised earlier. Um, and you can read all about it, but you know, you could have uh, bad spark plugs, you could have a, a rich fuel mixture uh, most of the time, uh, uh, as well as, you know, I don't know, different kinds of uh, uh, performance issues uh, such as engine misfiring, um, overheating, uh, but more than anything else, uh, the mileage of the car, this car by the way is only 65,000, it's got 65,000 miles, but it's age, uh, it's old, so the age of the car is probably the number one culprit. Um, if you have other issues, you want to First, find out what is causing the failure before you spend the money and the time and labor to replace the converter and then uh, a few months or years later find out that the converter has gone bad again. Uh, so uh, uh, this car is old, of course, uh, 19 years old, uh, it's a 2001 and uh, as of uh, today in 2020, March of 2020 is 19 years old and so it caused the material, uh, the converter material to uh, break apart and, uh, and then that's what uh, was causing the rattling sound when then when the car was driving or if the car was uh, sitting at idle with the engine running. And so I repeat the procedure in removing the O2 sensors. Putting my foot on the pipe as I uh, apply pressure and use that bar as leverage to uh, loosen it and then um, putting the two two sensors into the new pipe just to keep the sensors from um, getting damaged compare the two and um, and as I found out uh, the collar that you see there is uh, is not as thick as the one that came originally with the car and so you will have one of two options uh, the the original one is about almost uh, one inch uh, a little less than one inch uh, maybe three fourth of an inch, and then the new one is just uh, uh, I don't know uh, a little uh, more than a quarter of an inch. So you can use a, a spacer nut and carefully measuring uh, just to make up for the gap or difference. As I show here, this nut the rod that I took.
uh, I decided to just uh, using a cutoff wheel uh, cut off enough uh, the the to make up for the deficit in the um, collar width. I'm cutting the bolt really to make it shorter. You may have to just sand it a little bit, but here I'm showing how I uh, apply uh, some generous amount of uh, anti seize copper grease to the threads of the oxygen sensors. Uh, so that uh, next time I won't have to, if I ever have to, <clears throat> if I ever have to remove this again, it won't be as hard to remove it. Not that it was hard. If you have the right leverage, uh, at least in this case, uh, it wasn't so bad. But I've had to remove sensors uh, from other cars that, uh, you know, was not as easy. And you tighten these to 50 uh, Newton meters. Um, I'm not sure what that is in uh, foot pounds. I think maybe 37 foot pounds. I can um, look that up and, um, or, or you can too. But uh, all the other uh, bolts and nuts you tighten to 20 Newton uh, meters. So you do need a torque wrench that uh, uh, up to 50 Newton meters. Um, so a smaller torque wrench is just fine. And of course, uh, you use the same O2 sensor socket attached to your torque wrench in order to torque these. And so, um, at this point, you're uh, connecting, uh, and that's what I recommend, what I did. Uh, just loosely uh, connect the backside, the, the, the front exhaust to the rear exhaust. Um, uh, but don't uh, torque anything yet. And as you see, I have a cardboard box there right underneath that connection point. Uh, when you pull the catalytic converter out of the rear exhaust system, you want something on the, something there to catch it um, if you're replacing it. Uh, I mean, if, if, if you want to reuse it, but if you don't, I guess it doesn't matter if it falls to the ground. Uh, but I, I have the cardboard there just in case, so it makes it also easier to uh, do the work if you're on your own, which I was for the most part. I had my, um, my daughter and my son help me uh, a couple of times, but uh, for the most part, I was doing it on my own. A ratcheting wrench helps a lot. Uh, 
and you can get those also nowadays a lot cheaper than uh, when they first came out And then next, uh, you want to just um, connect the, the bracket. So, uh, Besides taking the outside bolts out, the most, the, 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 I should say, the next difficult task that you'll face will be to put the bolts back together. Uh, again, the inside one is easy, and that's where I start with, and you should too. Uh, start with the inside bolts, uh, loosely uh, connect them. Uh, there's a rivet nut on the other side. Uh, hopefully yours is in good shape. If not, you'll have to replace the rivet nut. Um, and I'm not showing that in, that in this video. I'm sure you can find instructions online someplace. But if, if uh, the rivet nut is not there, you will have to use some kind of bolt to... Uh, Sorry, if, if it's there and it's loose uh, or damaged, you'll have to use some sort of a bolt uh, from from um, the bottom to, to kind of knock it out. Um, but if it's not there, you would have to install one. Um, anyways, in, in my case, uh, the nuts were there. And so starting from the inside, you uh, loosely uh, connect the bolt to the inside nut and then I uh, then you work on the outside and good luck on that it's uh, just don't be discouraged take your time uh, with the tools that I've mentioned uh, the uh, swivel um, head socket and a long extension um, you should be able to do this uh, yourself and it's very rewarding as you finish uh, because uh, the exhaust I mean the two catalytic converters if you were to go to Mercedes-Benz any uh, dealer uh, they would charge you probably a couple thousand dollars for the two of them and then the labor itself is also cost prohibitive for a very old car so you can easily do this yourself i forget how much i paid for the catalytic converters uh, uh, i will try to find the pricing the current pricing and, and put it in the description uh, but uh, i don't think i had to pay more than 500 dollars for the two of them and of course the labor is free and I had the tools so you can save uh, a few thousand dollars doing this yourself
uh, if you like um, if, if, if you like this video uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and uh, share the video and uh, and if you have any comments or questions um, uh, when I get time I uh, make sure I read all the comments and that I answer any questions that you may have uh, thank you very much and uh, until next time bye bye